So we will stand up all together, raise our eyes up to the sky with faith and love in our hearts, and we will embark. Oh, oh, oh. We will give. Hello, my fellow Latter-day Saints. Kenzie Retro, the moment entertained here, the most inspirational moment in all of energy here today. Back once again. Wednesday, it's reaction day. Uh, I couldn't really find anything of major interest apart from a top 10 list. Top 10 most hated games on Steam. And those who know me well, they know how much I love my good games. Whether it's good soundtrack, good gameplay, good story, just good games in general. These are the most hated. Let's see why. Credit to Watch Mojo for actually creating this list. Let's go. Even on sale, these are not worth the price of admission. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most hated games on Steam. For more gaming videos, check out our new spin-off channel, Mojo Plays, for in-depth reviews, thoughtful video essays, detailed character origins, and insightful commentary. Mojo Plays, game smarter. <laughs> For this list, we're looking at the most infamously downvoted titles to grace Steam's store page. Whether it's because the game was broken, poorly designed, or had some shady behavior coming from the developers. Hmm. Hmm. Yay. Konami. Number 10, I Dynasty really Warriors 9. Really? One of this year's entries. Fans and critics frequently butt heads when it comes to judging each new Dynasty Warriors game. Critics take issue with the repetitive combat of the series, while fans seem to really enjoy it. However, this was the game that both parties could agree was simply the worst. Dynasty Warriors 9 attempted to integrate an open world design, but seemingly forgot to make the game... fun. The world felt empty and the game was littered with bugs and glitches. Even the bad voice acting couldn't redeem the game, coming off as less campy and more trying too hard to be bad. You still think we're lying. Why not ask the soldiers on the front line? Oh, Number 9, great. Space Base DF9. Of all the developers out there, we'd never expect Double Fine Productions to make it on a list like this. Space Base DF9 was a simulator game that tasked players with maintaining an environment in order to keep inhabitants happy and protected from alien invaders. So how did a simple game such as this become one of the most hated games on Steam? Well, in addition to stupid AI and a severe lack of polish, Double Fine had taken the game out of early access because of poor sales. After its official launch, Double Fine would cease support of the game and just release the source code for players. Basically, they gave out a broken buggy game and then just called it quits. Wow! Number 8. Gasp! You need to meet up with the others before your O2 runs low. Wow, how's about that? Touched the and tracking the GPS signal on the other members. Well look, it's a free game. Your goal here is to meet other players before you run out of oxygen or get hit by too many asteroids. If you manage to successfully hold um, forward for the entire 10 minute journey, then hey, you won the game and it's over. Despite having a pretty simple goal, it still manages to be a terrible game in its awkwardly placed invisible walls and oh, appalling graphics. It might be a free game, but we still want a refund. Number 7, Command and Conquer 4, Tiberium Twilight. Ah, it's yes! entirely surprising to see an EA game on this list. Tiberium Twilight has long been considered the death of the Command and Conquer series. That's actually a fitting reputation, considering the mediocre quality. And not just that, Electronic Arts bring back Command and Conquer, which you're thinking, fantastic, they finally bring it back! They bring it back as a mobile game, the idiots! The worst part about the whole thing is that the game demands that you maintain an online connection, even for modes that don't contain any online features. Hmm. Yeah, they clearly didn't learn from this mistake when they tried to release SimCity. Should your connection be lost at any point? Well, any progress you made is now lost. This was the game's DRM policy and it frustrated many players. Wrong. This is EA's DRM policy as far as I'm concerned. Number 6, Infestation, Survivor Stories, aka The War Z. Hmm. Infestation Survivor Stories, formerly known as The War Z, is practically a complete ripoff of its more successful the influence. Any a two slower. Mod named Daisy. The game was an absolute mess with frequent glitches, loads of bugs. 
<laughs> oh, I've got to read this. 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will, 5% rage, 50% pain, 0% reason to purchase this game. Ouch! Not bad. Not a pretty impressive spin on Remember the Name by Fort Minor. Pretty good song, by the way, folks. Bugs and terrible graphics. Today, the developers are no longer supporting the game, and the forums have been <laughs> shut down. You can't even purchase the damn thing. But if you really want your fix for some reason, you can try Infestation the Newsy, which features all of the same bugs as its predecessor and includes a Battle Royale mode because 2018. Oh, for Pete's sake, of course I was going to have a boy Battle Royale mode. PUBG and Fortnite already take care of that for us! Why do the game developers feel the need to saturate the market with Battle Royale? Call of Duty 4, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, Battle Royale! Battlefield 5, Battle Royale! Just leave it as PUBG and Fortnite. And leave it at that and make sure we don't have any more made. Huh. Huh. Number 5, Day 1, Gary's Incident. Ooh, this is infamous. <laughs> Oh my god, this is deafening. They say that any publicity is good publicity. However, ugh, this really isn't no, always no, the no. case, and good what happened with Day One Gary's Incident is a prime example. When the late John Bain, aka Total Biscuit, reviewed the game, he criticized many flaws of the game, uh, showing various bugs and design choices that basically uh, made no I've sense. Total Biscuit. Developer Wild Game Studios made copyright claims on his video, which <laughs> definitely led to further criticism. Needless to say, things actually got worse Ooh. for the developers with player backlash, and eventually, the game was pulled from the store. Good riddance. As you can see, his statement that I had no right to make advertising revenue from my critique is clearly false. Number 4, Game Tycoon 1.5. Got a spare dollar laying around? Well, you might want to spend it on something better than Game Tycoon 1.5. As you work on building your own video game company, you'll encounter a large variety of bugs and glitches such as audio it's loops, like unresponsive controls, and frequent crashing. It's just one massive headache of a game, from the poorly explained tutorial section to the slow animations. Two years later, it somehow managed to spawn a sequel, and yet the reviews were just as scathing as its predecessor. Number 3, Airport Simulator 2014. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Simulator games are starting to become a dime a dozen on Steam. However, only a small handful are actually worth your time, and Airport Simulator is not one of them. Users have noted a wide variety of issues that plagued the title. So, where do we even begin? Graphics look outdated, the gameplay is dull, there are frequent crashes, and the game is covered in more bugs than a dead pigeon. In short, it's basically a scam, <laughs> even for a game that costs 10 bucks that's not even worth clicking on. Number 2, Flat Out 3, Chaos and Destruction. We're always happy to welcome destructive racing games, since we really don't get a lot of those anymore. Yeah, However, yeah, this is yeah, not what we were looking for. Flat Out 3 Rather Chaos and Destruction them. has some of the worst controls in a racing game, and its poor optimization causes the game to lag with almost every input, even at the main menu. What's worse is the wonky and unrealistic physics engine. Crashing into cars feels like watching cardboard boxes kind of slap against each other, with the first two Flat Out games holding some level of quality. How did the third manage to be such a monumental waste of money? Oh. Before we reveal our most hated pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Right. I was about to mention Burnout. And basically it's a case uh, rather than EA thinking, hmm, what do fans want? Another Burnout game? No, 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 they don't want another Burnout game. Let's just remaster one they already like. Let's remaster Burnout Paradise. Arrgh! I mean, part of the problem with um, with this generation especially is the fact you're having remasters rather than actually new entries in these series. All for the sake of, hello, I like money. It was a Duitser with a tering, too great heart, it is a long
Number one, the slaughtering rounds. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are looking at is, um, er, was the most notorious game to ever hit the Steam store. The Slaughtering Grounds was the first game released by infamous James and Robert Romine, aka Digital Homicide. This boring zombie shooter featured extremely poor graphics, irritating music loops, and a hefty amount of asset flipping. Oh, and if you type blood splatter on Google Images, you can easily find the images which were used in the game, so now you know where they got them. Anyway, the reason you can't get this game anymore is because Digital Homicide tried to sue 100 Steam users for personal injury. Valve proceeded to remove all of their games from the store. Good move, dudes. Yeah. Game over. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day. Well, well, well. Need we say more beyond that? I mean, at least watch Mojo. I mean, at least watch Mojo had the decency to mention Total Biscuit. It's the first time he's actually. First time he actually got mentioned since uh, since his death, well, from what I've seen anyway. But the PC gaming show didn't even have the common courtesy to so much as mention him, let alone have a tribute segment to him. Absolute disgrace. Not as bad as the Yay's conference at E3, but definitely nowhere near as good as it should have been. But anyway. Yeah, I, d I did know about the, I say, I knew about the Gary's Incident thing. The Slaughtering Grounds, I knew about as well. Just as well, just as well I do a podcast these days so I can actually report all these sort of things. Anyway, like I say, I couldn't really find anything of note to react to apart from this top 10 list. So, yeah. Anyway, that does it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized in following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Latter Day Saints notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Tommy Jerry Sins on the left. Reactions playlist on the right. I'll see you tomorrow for Throwback Thursdays. See you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. Stay faithful.